Hi, James here again, and uh, just before I start, I just want to apologise for the lighting in here because I'm actually down a bulb, so it's, I appreciate everything's a bit dim. I've tried to turn the exposure on the camera right up, but it's... Anyway, this video is uh, another video about DVI cables or DVI connections. Uh, I did a video a while back, if you remember, it was the video where I had the green screen in the background and I was going through all the different types of connectors and what they do and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I just went through a few emails last night, a few more, and uh, there's still quite a few people a little bit confused about the whole DVI. Now I did explain in that video all the connections, but I didn't really explain very much about what cable to actually get depending on what sort of monitor or graphics card or onboard chipset or whatever you've got. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go through um, a couple of different examples of what cable you'd get if you had a specific type of monitor, graphics card, chipset, and whatever. Because I can totally understand that it's really confusing because you've got loads of numbers, acronyms, letters to worry about, I, A, and D, and whatever else. And you just think, shit man, why can't they just make one connector <laughs> which does it all, you know? They tried to do that with DVI, they really did. So first of all, I'm just going to quickly go through a couple of examples. Right, now if you look on the back of this machine, we can see we've got a choice of two connectors here. We've got DVI or VGA. We can have each or both at the same time. Now this machine's actually got uh, a GeForce 8600 on board, which is pretty good. And considering I only use this machine for like video editing and general office stuff, like typing and emails and stuff, that's good enough for me. So. I still want to use the DVI connector though because it does give a better image and when you're looking at the screen for quite a long time and you're typing and stuff that's really what you want, a nice clear sharp image so I want to use the DVI connector now if we look closely we can actually see that it's a DVI D socket remember from the other video, remember what one of those looked like so if we wanted to use this connector we'd have to get a DVI D cable like this one so the connector on the back of the machine is a DVI-D connector, so you want to get a DVI-D cable. And you're probably thinking, yeah, but what if the back of the monitor hasn't got a DVI-D connector? Well, if it's DVI and it hasn't got a DVI-D connector, it will have a DVI-I connector. Okay, so it can only have one of the two. So if it's a DVI-I connector, it will fit a DVI-D cable anyway. Because remember, DVI-I is universal. It fits A and D and I. It fits all three. So if it's not DVI-D on the back of your monitor, it's going to be DVI-I. So just get what suits the back of your graphics card. And we can see here that the connection on the back of the monitor is a DVI-D also. And we can confirm this. If we look here, it actually says DVI-Digital there. So we definitely know that this is a DVI-D connector, and also you can see it is. So you get one end of your DVI-D cable, you whack it into your DVI-D socket on the back of your computer, then you get the other end of your DVI cable, and you plug it into the DVI connector on the back of your monitor. And day presto, you're streaming through DVI socket. Now, your monitor should automatically detect that the, it's plugged into the DVI socket, and it should just switch to DVI automatically, but if your monitor stays on standby and it doesn't switch on, you might have to go through the menu and select DVI as the default input. If that doesn't work, try leaving the computer and waiting for the computer to boot fully before. Uh, it may have to boot right up so that the, the graphics card driver can tell the car to stream everything through DVI. If it's the first time you've used the DVI port, that's quite likely. Right now, here's the back of another machine. Now, this machine is used mainly for media like, you know, watching DVDs, video editing, gaming, you know, streaming, that kind of stuff. So, it made sense to go out and buy a decent graphics card for this one. Now, for those of you who are interested, because I know people are going to leave comments and ask, if you're interested, the card is actually, uh, it's an ATI Radeon HD 3650. Okay, so just in case you're interested. Now, fortunately, this card actually comes with dual DVI outputs, which means I can actually have dual monitors on this thing which is really cool. Now, if you look closely you can see these are actually DVI eye sockets and remember from the other video we see what a DVI eye socket looks like. Now it's all very well and good but the monitor that I use on this machine actually has a VGA connector on it but very handily in the box they actually supply an adapter. 
Now this is a VGA to DVI-A adapter. So what you do is you plug your VGA connector in the back. Now this is a DVI-A. But remember, because this is a DVI-I socket, the A will fit in there because I is a universal. Now obviously you knew that anyway. If they supply it in the box, obviously it's going to fit. Well, okay, so let's say, for example, I wanted to use the monitor out of my office on this machine, okay? Now, let's look at an example here, okay? Let's say this is your computer, and you've just been out and brought this graphics card, and you want to use DVI. Obviously, you've got no choice. There's nothing but DVI. Let's say you want to use this DVI, okay? Well, what have you got to consider? Well, basically, the only thing you've got to consider is what connection is on the back of your monitor, because this is a DVI-I socket which means this will fit all three types of DVI cable. So you haven't got to worry about the compatibility issue at this end, you've got to worry about what's on the back of your monitor. Okay, so when you buy a new graphics card and you've got a DVI eye socket, which again, 99% of graphics cards are DVI eye if you buy it as a graphics card. The ones that are on board tend to be DVI D. But if you've got a DVI eye socket, which again most of them are, you go by what's on the back of the monitor. Now, again, realistically, it's not going to be anything other than a DVI-D. Okay, so you get one end of your DVI-D cable and you put it in the back of the monitor. Now, obviously it fits because the connection in the back of your monitor is DVI-D. Then you get your other end of your DVI-D cable and because this is a DVI-I socket, it fits in there and then when you plug it in, a presto, there you go, just like that. Okay, one thing just to quickly bear in mind, okay, when you're going out to buy one of these things, okay, if you're just wanting to plug one monitor into one slot on your computer and you're not planning on doing what's called daisy chaining, which means you plug your DVI slot on the back of your machine into the DVI slot in your monitor, then you plug another monitor into that monitor and daisy chain them. If you're not doing that, okay, Go in the shop, make sure you look for, ask for a single link cable, okay? You don't want a dual link cable if you're just using it on one monitor, okay? Because it'll be a waste of time. It will fit because a dual link cable does still fit in a single link socket, but the dual link ones are a bit more expensive. So save yourself a few quid and just get a single link one because that's all you'll need if you're just using one monitor on one slot. Okay, just one last thing though. When you go out and buy one of these things, okay, please, whatever you do, do not get talked into buying a high quality one that's got gold plated connectors. Please don't, it will not make any difference, okay? Just get a box standard one. Don't bother buying one of these really high quality ones that have got like blue cable and bloody gold plated connectors. The ones in there are gold plated anyway. It doesn't matter about the ground sleeve being gold plated. You can pay up to 25 quid for one of these because it claims to be high quality, okay, please don't waste your money. Just go and buy yourself a standard, box standard one, you will get exactly the same result, it will not make a difference. So there you go, I uh, hope that's enough information there for you and I hope it's answered your question. But if you have got any more questions, just bum comment below. Now one last very quick thing as well. Um, People have been emailing me and uh, sending me comments and stuff saying you should really start saying practice and enjoy at the end of your videos. Now I never really said it to start with because I didn't really want to steal somebody else's thing. But then I realised, well, it's part of a DJ community and now everyone's saying it. So I guess I am part of this DJ community. So by a popular request, I'm going to start saying practice and enjoy at the end of my videos. So there you go. Hope this video has been a help. Thank you for watching. Practice and enjoy. He's asleep. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Come on, time to get up, Louie. It's your alarm clock, mate. You've been asleep all day, you lazy git. Come on, cats don't need sleep. You should be out catching mice or whatever it is cats do. <laughs> Lazy git. <laughs>